So one thing I like to do is I like to start a conversation with one individual in the group. And often this might be after maybe we just all talked about the weather. So there's a group light topic that we were all kind of just maybe awkwardly talking about. And okay, there's a moment of pause and I'm in this group. Everyone's in this group. And then all of a sudden I will pick one individual. I will try to go from genuine curiosity And then I will ask them a question. I will start a conversation with just one individual in the group, but everyone is watching and listening. And an easy way for topics is just going off of whatever event I'm at. So if it is a networking event, then I might ask about why they're here, who they want to connect with, what their profession is, what their hobbies are. So I start from that. If it's just socializing, I might ask about just their life experiences. So I might be like, are you going on vacation anytime soon? Are you going, do you have any trips planned, Sarah? I'll start the conversation with one individual, but as I'm talking to this individual, I'm highly conscious and aware that I'm still in a group setting. So they might be like, yeah, I'm going to Hawaii soon. I'll be like, oh my gosh, cool. We're in Hawaii. Honolulu, yo, I was there two years ago. I had a time in my life. Let me give you some recommendations. Have you guys been to Honolulu? So as I'm doing the one-on-one, I'll start to pull points so I can reference the entire group. And by me doing this, it's this ability to have intimate conversations with people, but also make sure the group is also feeling involved too. So that's why as I'm talking to Sarah about her Hawaii trip, I'll make little comments or questions to the, to the entire group. Have you guys been to Honolulu? Yeah, right. Oh my gosh, it's so great. What do you guys do when you're there? Surfing? Yeah, I tried that for the first time. Yeah, it was, it wasn't, it was hard, but it was amazing. <laughs> you know, sometimes we're in groups and then we tell a story or we make a comment and then there's no response from every, anyone, right? And that can get awkward. So what I like to do to prevent that from happening is I will bring up a point. I will say something, especially if I'm sharing a story. So there has been a longer time on me. I know my story is about to be done. When I end my story, I will naturally ask a question. Have you guys had a similar experience? Or that's my trip. Anyone else going on a trip? I really want to take another trip soon. I will end my story or my comments with a playful statement and a question for the group. So that way the conversation continues and there's no awkward silences. And I, I try to keep my energy lighthearted so that if I finish the story, I make a little comment and I ask the group because I'm already in this light nonchalant energy. If no one really does say anything or they kind of just like mumble or they nod and laugh, it's easier for me to continue to guide it too. be like, okay, no, no trips. Oh, that's sad. <laughs> well, what are you guys doing now then? Why are you guys so busy? When I have a lighter energy, even if small, awkward moments come up, it's so much easier to flow through it, to guide through it and not feel bad about it. And that brings me into the next thing I like to do is just having these side comments in group conversations. You know, not all the, we're not always going to be the one that is talking, the one that is, that is sharing stories. We have moments of that. And maybe sometimes we're more tired, but we still want to be involved, but just like not, not give too much energy. <laughs> so what I like to do when there's other people talking more, I'm just present. I can just be on the side making cheeky comments. <laughs> Cheeky comments or reassuring comments. Reassuring is the easiest. When I say reassuring, it's just when other people are talking, you just reassure them. Yeah, of course. Oh my gosh, that sounds great. Cool. I love that. Wait, have you been there before? So you're just like doing little reassurance of like hyping them up in their conversation and maybe asking some questions, maybe just throwing in some questions. So that's a really good, you're just like on the side, side character. (laughs) but you're involved and you're calm, cool, collected and you're nonchalant and you're present. And this is a great way to just feel included in the conversation and group conversation and get everyone else to be chill and light about it too. You know, a lot of times when we're, I notice this when we're at networking events or socializing events, especially networking events, actually people are stuffy. So you're in a group conversation and it's almost like people take turns talking and there's a lot of awkward 
uh, laughter padding and just moments of silence. <laughs> I know this is a lot. Um, so by you being on the side, being lighthearted, being kind of nonchalant and throwing in reassuring comments, reassuring questions, but take it to the next level. Start, start throwing in some cheeky, cheeky comments. And when I say cheeky comments, a lot of times it really is, I guess you can say it's kind of like uh, when we see on social media, letting our intrusive thoughts take over, kind of like that, but it's still honed. I'm not speaking intrusive thoughts to the point of disrespecting people or really hurting people's feelings, but I will just be a little bit more edgy with it. So if I'm listening to someone talking and they're mentioning, if they're saying the same thing over and over again, I'll be like, girl, we heard that 10 times already. <laughs> Something like that. I'll call out small things or if they're saying like, you know, they were on vacation, but they had to, uh, they couldn't find the best bathing suit and they're just getting really concerned with it. I'll be like, girl, you're on vacation. Like small things like that, where it's just, it's obviously not disrespectful. They're not going to be truly hurt unless you're a sensitive bitch, but <laughs> you will be the one that tests the water. You can feel the level, the extent, the edges of the people around you, even people you don't know well, as long as you're present, you're conscious, you can tune in and you can gauge the tolerance of others. And then you manage, you balance your cheekiness based on that. But cheeky comments is great when you know how to do it well. And yeah, again, for me, it's just being really present and aware of what they're saying. And I'll just pick up on little things and I'll gently call it out, but I allow them to do it back. And that just keeps the entire conversation more playful and it allows everyone to uh, um, loosen up a bit, let more of their genuine self come out. And that's actually the best for networking and socializing events because if we're there to connect with people and we're trying to gauge who we actually want to connect with, we're trying to get them to present more of their best self and their authentic self. Last trick to remember in group conversations is also the ability to be silent. <laughs> Everything I just mentioned up to now, allow these moments to come naturally. A lot of times though, before we start a story, before we ask someone about something, we need that moment to rest in between new topics. And we actually want to be the one that influences the group energy. We can all feel when we're in a group setting and everyone's in a people-pleasing energy. There's no gaps in between topics, but all the conversations feel draining because it's all just up here and we're talking about weather and then like work, but then we're not actually getting to something substantial, but everyone is kind of in this anxious energy. So it's one after the other, there's no pauses and everyone is feeling like it's a group, it's mob mentality, <laughs> really. So each one of us have to be courageous and confident to show through our own energy, we're willing to pause in between topics. So that's why when one, one topic is done or one, uh, when the group is interacting and there's a moment of silence, the first thing is not to think, oh my gosh, awkward silence, now I need to fill it, no. Be conscious. Okay, now we're done. Take a breath. You just regulate yourself. And you're also not the hero. Every All the techniques we've, uh, we've shared up to now, it's to help yourself. It's to help you feel confident in the conversation. And as you start to feel confident, you're doing small things to help others feel confident. But you're not there trying to save everyone. So in these moments of silence, you're resting. You're taking a breath. You're regulating and through your energy you're sh and you're still looking at everyone you're smiling just through your energy you're showing people hey it's okay that no one's talking for a moment but i'm also not going to look at everyone awkwardly and build that tension energy no i'm showing you relax <laughs> you're looking at everyone you're smiling and in that moment you can be like okay is there is there anything i'm curious about with these individuals or is there anything i can share right now and just being okay with slowing down that moment, these thoughts actually come quickly, but you're grounded in just flowing through these things. And naturally, you'll actually speak of the next thought or 
uh, start a story with more confidence and with more of this genuine base. You're not chasing that people-pleasing energy. So be okay with silences to rest in the silence in the moment. And when you're in the silence, just the biggest thing is you're not thinking about the silence. You're actually using that as a, t- a break and a time to just calm down. And when you're conscious and present with the break, things will just naturally come. That's it for today. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, whether you're tuning in from my YouTube or my podcast. I hope these tips have been helpful. Again, these tips are really for us to not know, not only know how to be confident in ourselves and our own speech and delivery in group settings, but to know how to guide and navigate and help others feel also confident and uh, included and comfortable in these conversations as well. And the ability to do both, to care about my speech, my confidence, deliver my words and my story as well, but also do little things to help others feel comfortable and included. That is the hallmark of true confidence and charisma. I think the part of helping others feel included and being able to be confident with everyone and you know being dynamic, that's the charisma, the charisma part. The confidence is being confident with yourself. The charisma is showing that you can care about you, but care about others at the same time. Also stay tuned for my workplace boundary scripts. I'm dropping this month, April, 2024. So I'm basically giving, giving you guys starting scripts for common workplace situations where you might need to communicate boundaries. And I give you guys starting scripts in soft, sharp, and playful responses, playful expressions, playful emotional expressions for you to start the conversation, start the interaction with. Then I have a how-to video and text as a guide for you to know how to navigate through the entire interaction. So it's a whole package. You guys are going to love it. Stay tuned for that. You can sign up for my emails below to be notified. I'm also going to be announcing it on all my channels. And you guys can also book one-on-one coaching with me. You guys can book it in the description below. Get personal coaching with me to improve your social presence and how you navigate through social uh, dynamics in your life. And please jump on my weekly live streams on Instagram and TikTok. I do talks and Q&As. So that's also an opportunity for me to help you more personally as well. And that's it. Thank you guys so much for being here. I appreciate and love every single one of you. Remember when in doubt just gotta see things from a new view we just gotta see things from a new view i'll see you guys next time bye